Hi, it's Alex. Thanks for joining me for Friday Sews. This week I have been doing a little bit of sewing, but I've also bought some fabric. So I thought I would just catch you up on all of that, uh, show you the fabric that I've bought and have a bit of a chat about my plans or my thoughts about how I'm going to use it. Um, as always, there are lots of us doing Friday Sews. It's a way of just, yeah, having a bit of a chat really. Um, so I will put in the description box below links to everyone that's taking part. First things first, I am wearing what I sewed this week and that is the assembly line oversized shirt. I have made it before. I showed you, I think probably back in January, I made a version which my daughter stole. It was blue with white sight hounds on. And that version I made in a size large. I did feel when I'd made that, that it was kind of too big, um, even though obviously, the clues in the title. It's supposed to be oversized. Um, so this time I made a size medium and the reason I decided to make this is that I wanted a shirt that I could wear with the top that I was making for Minerva in that um, really nice textured knit which I have finished but I'm not going to show you yet because I need to go and update Minerva first but once I've done that I will let you have a look at it. But I wanted a top to wear underneath it and I realised that I didn't have anything that I thought would go with the right kind of with browns uh, and camels and those kind of tones. So I actually bought this fabric from Minerva and it's a, I was going to say, a sh a sh <laughs> I'll start again. And <laughs> ah, can't get my head around the word shirting. It's a shirting fabric. Um, obviously loads of choice over on the Minerva website and this isn't a fabric that was gifted, it's one I paid for. Um, yeah, I've been looking for something in a kind of camel, slightly darker than beige kind of a colour. I'm sure that's not its technical term. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it. Because I've shown you one of these before and I've kind of talked about it, I won't go into too much detail. Suffice to say that I still feel the same thing I felt when I made it before, which is I don't understand why the instructions are not telling you to do a burrito on the yolk, um, they, which I ignored. I did do a burrito on the yolk. I did add the little um, hook on the back. Um, it's so easy to do the burrito method and there's something so satisfying about doing it. It Not only does it make the garment really nice and easy, all your raw seam allowances are nicely enclosed, it's all beautiful, it's so simple. I actually think it's probably easier to do the burrito method than the method where you put one yolk on and then you turn up the seam allowance, put the other one and then have to hand stitch that in or stitch in the ditch. Anyway, maybe they'll update that because the assembly line are usually pretty good on their instructions. Um, but other than that, yeah, it came together nice and easily. It does have, um, you know, a proper cuff, not a proper placket, just one of those that you turn over. I'm really pleased with my buttons, little square buttons. Um, I bought them when I went to Bristol to take my daughter to uni in September. They had a little haberdashery shop there um, and I knew that they'd come in handy for something at some point, so I'm pleased with those. But other than that, nice easy make. The thing with this oversized shirt is, as mentioned before, it has pockets. I mean, it's somewhere between a tunic and a shirt really, isn't it, with its, with its pockets. But I'm thinking I'll get a lot of wear out of it. I think it'll be sort of something I can wear kind of regardless of the season. And uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a play with different ways to style it. So because I was ordering this shirting, oh I got it right that time, <laughs> fabric from Minerva, I obviously, as you do, had a quick look at the website. I think there's one of those, if you order a certain amount you get free delivery. I'm a sucker for that every time. Um, anyway, I had a little look to see what else there was. And when I left off last week, I also said that I was going to have a think about what I wanted to sew for the coming season, which is obviously going to be spring in the UK. And in fact, even though it was snowing last week, the weather has got considerably milder. Um, you know, it was minus two or minus three last week, and today it's 11 degrees. So. Spring is on its way in the UK, um, but I have learned that I don't always get it right if I start planning too early for the season that's coming. Um, 
you know you don't always remember do you what your kind of favorite things to are to wear and it's only when I start to when the weather does get warmer and I start to dig out those clothes because I do tend to keep things um, down in the basement that I'm not wearing so I'll dig them out have a look start wearing things the weather gets warmer and it's only then that I kind of start to think um, you know where are the holes in my wardrobe what do I need and what do I enjoy wearing it's kind of easy to look at pictures and Pinterest and magazines I still have my Vogue subscription which is a brilliant Christmas present from my mother-in-law it's very easy to look at all of those things and all those images and think that there are things that I want and that I'm gonna wear but it's only when the weather gets warm enough that I'll really know so I've decided to just slow down a little bit before getting carried away with an entire set of spring plans. Having said that, as I said, I have ordered some fabric. And what I've ordered is fabric to make a jacket in because a jacket is something you're always gonna wear. Um, I really, really wanted to make a winter coat this year. There are two coats that I've shown you before that I really want to make. One is the Oslo, the Tessuti Oslo and the other is a Vogue trench coat pattern that I have. In some ways I'm dying to make them, but I've hardly been wearing the coats I've already got and it seems a bit silly. The style I'm gonna go for is a blazer because a blazer is a classic. A blazer is something I'm gonna, I know I'm definitely going to wear. I'm gonna throw it on with jeans, I can put it on over dresses. Even if it's very cold right now, I could put a blazer on and put a coat on over the top of it. So the fabric I bought, which has also come from Minerva, is this viscose suiting fabric. As you can see, it's a bit of a neutral. I'm focusing kind of on brown and tan and camel and um, those kind of colours because I think they go with pretty much anything and they kind of go with my colouring as per. Um, and I really like this. It's, I guess, a bit of a classic really, isn't it? It's viscose, so it's not too thick. It's not wool, which sounds nice, but isn't always right for um, the weather as it gets milder. It's got quite a nice weight to it. It's not too flimsy, but it's not too thick. So, and I like the fact that it's got a little red stripe in it as well, just to give it a bit of interest. So I then had a little look at patterns. And I know that the Heather jacket or Heather blazer is a new pattern that's out now. And I can't remember, I've got a real mental block. I always get the Friday Pattern Company and named patterns completely mixed up. So it's one of those two. Um, I had a look at it. I was very tempted, but I don't think it's right for me because it's marketed as oversized and I actually don't want that. I, because I'm somebody that you know has a thicker waist, I actually want to have a jacket that is a little bit more tailored at the waist. In fact, if anything, I'd like something that had what you'd kind of call a nipped in waist. So, you know, it goes in at the waist and sort of almost flares out more at the side around the hip. And I just couldn't find a pattern that does that. I looked at the um, indie companies, I looked at, you know, all the big four. And although there are a few blazer patterns out there, quite a lot of double breasted, um, there are quite a few tuxedo style ones that have more of a shawl collar and I wanted a notched collar. So I really didn't feel that there was as much choice out there as I thought there would be. I have in the end settled on the Jessica or Jessica, not sure of the pronunciation, jacket from Closet Core Patterns. So I have ordered that and it sent it over to Fabuloso so they're printing one out for me and that will be winging its way in the next day or two. I thought with Closet Core there definitely will be lots of backup information and so alongs and all the rest of it. Um, it's kind of using speed tailoring techniques which I like, a lot of fusible interfacing which I don't like so that will be interesting because I will avoid that like the plague. Um, but yeah I'm looking forward to it. I've made jackets before but always hoping to learn something new. I haven't got any lining fabric for it yet, but I have this morning popped on to uh, Fabworks website because Fabworks are always good for linings um, and ordered some. I managed to find some that isn't acetate, which I hate. So some viscose is on its way. So that's what I got from Minerva. And then the other thing I got is definitely not in my colors. 
but I just couldn't resist it. I bought this from Lamarzi Fabrics. It is this fabric here. It's a viscose and it's from Dashwood Studios. Now, you may know that I am really trying to stick within my colour palette, which is kind of autumnal colours. Um, I definitely don't think <laughs> many of these colours are within that palette, but I really love this fabric and I really wanted to buy it. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to make it into a skirt and then that way it doesn't really matter too much because it's not kind of up here, it'll be all down here. However, I am struggling a little bit to find a pattern so maybe you can help. What I'm looking for is a long skirt. I do like really long skirts. It'll probably be like only kind of that much above um, ankle length. And to some extent, I was thinking I could take that and add it to a piece of elastic and just gather it on, to, you know, stretch the elastic while I sew it on, gather it, jobs are good, as my husband would say. Um, and yeah, I could do that. But my concern is when I've done that before, and I have done it before, is that you end up with a bit of bulk around the waist and around the tummy, which I'm trying to avoid. What I'd ideally like is a skirt that's fitted around the waist and hips, perhaps maybe some with some darts at the back and then flaring out down to the hem, kind of A-line, something like that. Actually, I think because it's such a simple skirt that there aren't really any patterns out there that do it. Um, there are bias cut skirts, but I don't think that's going to work because I'd like it to be quite long and just because of the length of the, um, you know, if you put it on a bias, I'm not going to get a long length out of the fabric. Um, I could try and draft one myself and I suspect I could do it, but I love this fabric so much and I'm a bit lazy really. If someone else has done it for me, I'd rather buy a pattern than spend, you know, best part of the day faffing around drafting it and twirling it and all the rest of it. The other thing I thought I could do is the skirt that I made, which was um, the mulligan skirt from Daughters of Style. And that was the one that has the ties at the side that you kind of pull up and get the ruching effect. And I thought I could make that skirt without the ties in the side, so just with, you know, standard seams. And that, I really like that skirt. I've been wearing that a lot. Um, I thought I could do that and I think that is my fallback position but if anybody's seen anything just a really simple a-line skirt um, you know it can have a bit of a flare, flare to it a bit of you know a bit of drape uh, but fitted around the waist please let me know uh, because I am dying to do it and I don't think it would take very long it's nice this fabric I was a bit worried because you know the usual story when you order online you don't always know what you're gonna get um, but you know sometimes viscose can be a bit too thin and you end up sort of wearing something that just looks like a crumpled old cloth uh, but this has got you know it's not too thick not too thin I think it will be just about right so I'm really looking forward to doing that and I know that's the sort of thing I'm gonna wear to death and then while I was on the Lamarzi website I had a little look around and one thing that I have been on the hunt for is I'm trying to find a pink colour, could be almost any fabric, uh, a pink colour that I can wear and uh, somebody with, who's grown up with red hair, okay it's hennaed and it's more heightened <laughs> than its natural state but I've had red hair all my life and any of us that've got red hair we're always told you can't wear pink and so I've been having a look around and one thing I spotted was there was a drama on TV recently called The Undoing with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant it's really popular here in the UK, I'm sure it was big in the US as well. And obviously she's got similar kind of colouring to me, so I'm beadily watching what they put her in and what works and what doesn't work. And she was definitely wearing some rosy pink colours at times. And I think what was working for her was where the pinks go kind of a little bit more raspberry and head a little bit more towards purple, but not as far as lilac. So I've been looking for that kind of raspberry pink fabric. So while I was on the Marsy, I had a look at their viscose jerseys 
and I chose this. This is definitely more of a purple or a lilac rather than a kind of raspberry pink colour so I haven't really nailed that yet. I'm still on the hunt although I did see uh, a really nice jersey that fitted the bill on the Lulu Designs website yesterday so maybe I'll give that a try. Um, having said that this is still a shade that I haven't really worn so for the sake of a metre and a half of viscose jersey, I'm, yeah, I'm still going to enjoy trying it out and seeing how I get on with it. I think what I'm going to do, in fact I know what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make another deer and doe plantain top. Uh, that's the free pattern because I actually just find, if I'm going to wear a long sleeve top, that that's the one that I tend to go for when I'm you know, choosing things I've already made. I like the neckline on it, you know, it has a scoop that's not too high and not too low and it's not too fitted, it still has a bit of drape which this viscose jersey will work really well for. So I'm definitely going to do that. Now I did think that when I ordered this fabric for my skirt that I would make a top out of one of the many, <laughs> one of the many colours that are in it. I thought that would work really well. And although a lot of these are more summery and spring colours, there are some um, kind of more autumnal colours in there too. There are greens and yeah, there are all sorts of things in there. I now think that these two together might work after all. I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe I'll just have to buy some more fabric to match one of the colours in here. What a shame. Um, so that's it in terms of fabric. I did make a toile, I guess, of the mahogany turban. I did use a viscose purely because I just wanted to check how it fitted and it wasn't the best choice of fabric. Um, it's okay, but I think it might work better with something a little bit heavier. It was quite a flimsy viscose. Um, so, but I did like, I did very much like sleeping with it with all my hair off my face. Got some slightly strange looks from my husband, but you know. Um, so I'm gonna have a little bit of an experiment trying different fabrics for that, just as and when. Um, yeah, so if I find anything that works particularly well, I will come back and show you. But other than that, I've still got to finish my crochet cardigan. It's very 1970s. Uh, but when I've done that, I'll show you. It might be done by next week, hopefully. Um, please let me know if you've got any suggestions for uh, skirt patterns for this fabric. That would be really good, because that's something I'm desperately keen to do. Um, but other than that, yeah, please just look after yourselves and let's hope we get some lifting of restrictions on the agenda soon. Uh, yeah, so have a good week. See you soon. Bye bye.